The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 5, verses 17 to 26. Jesus was teaching one day, and among the audience there were Pharisees and doctors of the law, who had come from every village in Galilee, from Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was behind his works of healing. Then some men appeared, carrying on a bed a paralyzed man, whom they were trying to bring in and lay down in front of him. But as the crowd made it impossible to find a way of getting him in, they went up onto the flat roof and lowered him and his stretcher down through the tiles into the middle of the gathering in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, he said, My friend, your sins are forgiven you. The scribes and the Pharisees began to think this over. Who is this man talking blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But Jesus, aware of their thoughts, made them this reply. What are these thoughts you have in your hearts? Which of these is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, get up and walk. But to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralyzed man, I order you get up and pick up your stretcher and go home. And immediately before their very eyes he got up, picked up what he had been lying on and went home praising God. They were all astounded and praised God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen strange things today. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, the world gives us a type of fear and insecurity in life. Do you not feel that? If we are driving somewhere, we have the fear of accidents. In the place of work, we have the fear of the situation. Will I lose my job? Will someone blame me of something? There are various types of fears. At home, when you live amidst your children and your family, you feel insecure and fear whether your family life will be okay. There is an insecurity about the earning food, about the shelter. So these type of fears are there. But above all, if you have suppression, maybe from your neighbors or from anyone who is powerful, you begin to have more fear. You begin to feel suppressed, insecure. And this was the condition of the Israelites. But the author Isaiah clearly says, you do not have fear now because God is coming to dwell in our midst. Remove all the fear that you have. Let everyone praise God. Let everyone exalt Him. The plants, animals, water, the full nature 
and remain cool and calm. Have no fear. You will live in the glory of God. There is no fear. Yes, my dear friends, Christmas is such a season. There should be no fear of any insecurity, of sicknesses, illnesses, no fear of enemies, no fear of anything, of persecutions, because it is a joy that is coming in our lives. The joy that is permanent, the joy that will give us eternal life and eternal happiness and bliss. Why? Why should we fear at all? Jesus, in Luke chapter 5, verses 17 and above, heals a paralytic man. People, when they see that Jesus had a special power from above, though the Pharisees and scribes who thought that they were secured, they would easily find fault with Jesus. What is he talking? They want to find fault by quoting, by using scriptures. And then strange things they would not believe because it is not according to their scriptures. But actually the scriptures are making it very clear that the coming of the Lord will free us from every sickness, from every illness, from every captivity, from every slavery. So the people of faith bring a paralytic man who was on a stretcher and as they were bringing him closer to Jesus, they found that he was all clustered around with people. They couldn't go inside to meet him. So they take him through the roof by separating a few tiles, taking the man down directly where Jesus was standing. And when Jesus sees that these people have brought this man through the roof, oh wow, what a wonderful faith. He appreciates the faith of these little ones. And there he says, your sins have forgiven you. And all around see, who is he to forgive sins? Only God can do it, yes. Only God can do it. Now this is God himself. Jesus is God himself. They did not realize that he was God. And then, at that time when Jesus knows their minds, he asks them, which of it is easy? Either to forgive sins, or say to the man, your sins are forgiven, or get up and walk. Go away with your stretcher. Both are difficult. But to a man who is of God and God himself, this is the power, this is the strength, this is the healing work of God. And so, my dear friend, Jesus tells the man, get up, take your stretcher and walk. The man goes back praising God. And everyone around feels, oh, strange things have been happening. Yes, my dear friends, strange things will happen. At the time of the coming of our Lord, strange things will happen. But if you are ready for the coming of the Lord, there will be no strange things that will happen. Because your mind will let you know that these signs are from God. And this is the true coming of the Lord. So my dear friends, let us prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. And how do we prepare? Open our hearts to the Lord and to one another. Live in charity with one another. Show concern for our neighbors, for our own family members. And allow them also to receive Christ in them.
and as a family, as a community, let us welcome the Lord so that we all may be healed of all our ailments. Amen.